everyone. This is Camille Mendler with Omdia, and I'm delighted to have one of my forthcoming panelists at the Big 5G, Max Silber. So are you looking forward to the event? Of course I am. Uh, the event itself and certainly the fact that it's in Austin, which is a beautiful city, and I, I had a great time attending the Big 5G show last year there. Yeah, it's certainly the place to be, Austin, all of that uh, tech money coming in. And some of that tech money is going to be around 5G, we hope, right? We hope, um, of course. It's uh, it's certainly ramping up. Now, Matt, I, Max, I'd really love you to introduce um, you know, what you do at Mettel and also the company. Not everyone knows who they are. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you find yourself in this big 5G space. Sure. So I'm as my official title is VP of Mobility and IoT here at Mattel. What that basically means is I oversee uh, anything to do with our uh, distribution of mobile services or IoT services to around 5,000 corporations and organizations. Um, I, I used to say nationwide. Now it's becoming more like worldwide. Oh, uh, and we yeah. we really support everyone from medium sized business all the way up to enterprise, as well as some uh, government customers like the U.S. government is a big customer for Metal as well. Uh, we do not do anything in the consumer space. So our consumers are really the end users of a corporation that are given a device with service from that corporation. Well, the enterprise is the place to be. It's where everyone is focusing in on, including, you know, like the big telcos who used to love consumers and now think that enterprise is the place to be. But you've been there for a number of years. And I would say that, you know, you're not a telco. You're more of a managed service provider, correct? What makes yes. you a bit more different, I think, in, in this 5G space? So I think I think the way we approach the market is very different. I think that's where we've seen some great success. Whereas a traditional MNO uh, might look at selling a service and selling it with a device, uh, we look at the end user experience. We look at delivering everything as a service. So, for example, our most popular go-to-market program for enterprises has been our MDAS or mobile device as a service offering that you know does everything from you know these shiny beautiful things to any kinds of rugged all the way down to ruggedized tablets and anything else you can think of uh, but really providing it as a complete service uh, the, the I think the the real gap that we solve for is uh, through what we saw through the pandemic and after we still see about 50% of end users from the corporation being in some form of remote or hybrid state. And that makes it incredibly difficult for an IT department to service because it, it, as you probably know, if you're home and you walk into your kitchen and accidentally smash your phone, um, calling your IT department, getting them to issue a ticket, start swapping devices, it's, it's cumbersome. It requires a lot of involvement. So we've really solved for that. We have a complete uh, MDAS program with a device replacement through the term of the contract. Uh, and that's really how we've approached the market. That's been very different than how the MNOs go to market. Right. Well, I'd love to look at your contracts. And I used to negotiate and evaluate um, enterprise SLAs. So uh, that that is really where you're coming from. And so 5G is just something you're adding to enhance the experience is that yeah. that, that would be one way to position it is that right 5g for us is ultimately an enabler it's an enabler uh -huh. of providing a better user experience now our users could be a person or it could be a waste truck driving around doing its pickup Wh whoever that end user is or whatever object that end user is 5g just provides that better overall experience to the user now we keep throwing around this term 5G, but it's not a single service. You know, it's a portfolio that's got like fixed wireless. There's the mobility. There's the private, um, private 5G. What are you focusing on, and where where do you position yourselves in that sort of portfolio? So Mattel actually, as an organization, does a lot more than just mobility. I mean, we do everything up to and including SD WAN, where we're considered a leader in the magic quadrant for Gardner uh, for managed network services. So we we really try to 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 instill technology where it's going to provide the greatest value to the end user, obviously within budget, because budget's also an important element. Oh, yeah. So I'd say I'd say we really play in in just about every one of those elements, everything from the end user device to private networks, where we do a lot of private network requirements. We haven't gone as far as slicing just yet, 
So we're really uh, not, not many doing... people have uh, exactly it's mostly yeah. in the lab right now. Yeah, it's yeah, it seems to be in the lab. We are looking at a few things that will allow some version of slicing for our larger enterprise customers, typically in the Fortune 100 space or in the federal space where they have really massive needs, but really need that privatized uh, yeah. high quality of service uh, network support. But outside of that, I'd say for the most part, it's just uh, enabling more services over a connection. And good, a good example is, so we started with MDAS for smartphones and tablets. Now we're looking at adding laptop as a service for 5G enabled laptops like the Qualcomm Snapdragon chip that's coming out with yep. Lenovo and Surface and a few other models. So it's really just about, you know, how is that going to get to a place where, and, and for some of our enterprise customers, they want it to get to a place where 5G in an embedded laptop is the primary connection. They don't even want the risk of having end users try to uh, connect to a, a Wi-Fi, for example. So that's a nice service, but you but you also mentioned SD WAN, which has been so disruptive, you know, for a number of years. Really moved into the mainstream, of course, with SASE coming on as well. Um, do you think that five G's, you know, what that combination of SD WAN and five G, how is that going to play out in the market? You know, is one driving the other, sort of a chicken and egg type of thing. You know, what type of context do you see, see these two being used together? So I think for years now, actually, the way we originally launched SD-WANs was with a mobile connection. Now, primarily it was being used as a secondary or backup mm -hmm. because of the consumption. So everything really comes back to the econ basically the economic value for the customer. Could we turn on 5G as one of the primary links that we're blending into a high quality of service SD-WAN endpoint connection? Absolutely. We could do it right now and we can deploy every time we deploy a pre-mounted board to a customer with SD-WAN, with all the wiring, with the wireless component or router already mounted on the board. We could just put a 5G module router, but then the, the question comes back to cost. Is the cost there yet? And it isn't quite there yet. We can't deploy fixed wireless or wireless backup 5G and just say, hey, it's unlimited. It's part of the regular plan. But I think consumers at this point want it. They do want it because it's the quickest, most reliable way for them to get a connection at a location where they want to be able to implement SD-WAN and continue to have that high quality of service. And and that 5G F, FWA and SD WAN can work very nicely when time is money. And I've spoken to like franchises, you know, pizza franchises where, you know, the first out there is going to win the business. And so that's been a great solution for them. Depends which part of the country. So it's an interesting time, isn't it, with 5G coming into the market, really becoming more mainstream. It's taken a little while, though. Um, and I'm reminded of the fact that we're almost, you know, 40 years since the breakup of AT&T or the Bell companies, um, but we still haven't quite, you know, the pot switch off is something I know you guys have been involved in. But do you think that 5G will have an impact in driving further change in the telecom industry, which after all is over 100 years old? Where do you see that that going? Well, I see that happening already. We actually deployed today POTS replacement solutions, which is a technology-based solution. And in mo more cases than not, in a new location, for example, for a pizza place or for a uh, new medical building, in order for them to get a certificate of occupancy, they need to have fire alarm at the bare minimum for the fire marshal and, to and the lift, give them authorization. And the elevators, as you would say? The elevator lines. Believe it or not, in healthcare, we still use fax machines. So the ability to support faxes, it's unbelievable, but they still oh, use it. Because you need a legal for legally for the timestamp, isn't it? I think it is. It's it's still considered to be one of the few fully HIPAA compliant ways of transmitting information for healthcare. So they still use faxes. And by the way, when I say faxes, we're transmitting 70 to 90 pages at a time. So full medical records coming what? over a fax machine from one That's practice crazy. to another. It is, but that's what's been handled up until now with these old copper pots lines that, as you know, the FCC has now allowed the underlying bells to decommission them. Um, and that means disconnect notices. That means their ability to raise rates month over month. So we deployed a solution that's straight out of the gate, even if you have no 
uh, broadband in the in the new location, you can use cellular. We're using LTE still today uh, in order to turn up that site and get the certificate of occupancy. Now, long term, we do want to switch out the modules and make that same unit uh, that trans transfers your traditional POTS lines into a digital form, make it a 5G device. So it will help uh, transitioning and, and there's still you know a significant number of POTS lines out there, probably somewhere between five and seven million remain in the US. So it's still a major problem statement and it's something that needs to be addressed because every commercial building you you go into has a minimum of two POTS lines today. So that that's something to think about as you're kind of moving around. You, you go to your local hotel, wherever you're traveling to, the elevator line is dependent on it. If you get stuck in the elevator, the fax machines, like I said, and the alarm lines, the signals that go back and forth that tell the alarm monitoring company, it's there's a smoke detection on yeah. you know floor 17 on the third panel or whatever it is. That's the information that needs to continue to flow. And access to 5G, certainly as the next step from LTE, is going to continue to get us through that transformation. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to talk a lot, you and I, on this panel on uh, about monetizing 5G in the enterprise space. And I suppose, you know, making that move from legacy as smooth as possible is one of the top secrets that we need to share with the audience. But we won't tell them what all the secrets are because we want them to come and attend uh, the the event. But tell us one little one little tip that you'd make, um, give the audience in terms of how to make 5G really attractive to enterprises. So I think it's wrapping value around it. It's not in the approach traditionally has always been, hey, I knew I knew you had LTE, but now I've got 5G for you. Would you like it? But there's no value. We're not actually explaining what they're getting. So so try to bundle it in like we've bundled it in as you know, kind of automated over the air devices with 5G, with your applications preloaded, with your security profiles preloaded. Mm -hmm. Same thing for laptops. Think of laptop as a service being 100% 5G and making sure that your end users are having Teams calls or having Zoom calls and they're getting that incredible experience as part of that. And, and you're removing the risk to the organization of them going to the local Starbucks and getting on a public Wi-Fi and exposing potentially a security risk to the organization. So you have to, to create it as a product and as a benefit to the to the users and to the organization and for them experience. to actually say 5G is the way to go. Okay, fantastic. So look forward to seeing you at the big 5G Max and uh, Meta has a lot to talk about in general. So look forward to the event and please do come to the panel sessions. Thanks again, Max. Thank you.